LP and a Paul Harris fellow. He's been a long time Rotarian with this club. Please welcome Mike, take it away. Thank you. Uh, and, and I'm hoping that we do have our two, uh, two guests on here. I just got a little email that said they didn't see if Christy and James were on. Let me say this, but let me start out by saying this. It's only appropriate that Greg would have worn that uh, shamrock on his hat. And I get the opportunity to introduce two of my favorite Irish lads today. Now they're not wearing green, uh, they're wearing purple and lavender, I think. But uh, what I wanna do is introduce both uh, Christy Holly and James O'Connor. I'll take you back though a little bit before I introduce them. James and I spoke to this group, I think a couple, of, maybe three years ago when James was our head coach for the men's team. So you've heard him before, but I'll, I'll make a little introduction to him after I finish with Christy. Christy has come with us uh, from Derry, Ireland in the U.S. for a long time, though 15 years in New Jersey. He was the coach at Sky Blue uh, in the uh, NWSL. He also was involved in, the, in coaching with the U.S. Uh, women's national team and involved in the uh, Olympics and the U.S. World Cup. So he has a world of experience in soccer uh, in, in his past. We were fortunate to be able to bring him to Louisville to take the reins of the women's team racing Louisville this fall. So we're going to hear... We're going to hear Christy talk about um, talk about women's soccer and, and tell us all about that team. Now, Christy has said that he has the best Irish accent among the two. Uh, I actually asked Brad Estes to kind of be in the background on this call in case he has to interpret for either one of these uh, lads. But anyway, we'll get we'll get to uh, Christy in just a second. Let me say a word about James and James O'Connor. You all met as I said a few years ago, James came to us uh, from Orlando. He is also from Dublin, Ireland, uh, played for Stoke City and West Bromwich uh, before he was lured to Orlando uh, some years ago to play and then be a player coach with the Orlando team, which we were able to then uh, acquire from Orlando, this, their USL franchise and bring it to Loyal, as you remember with Wayne Stoppinel, who was involved with Orlando. So, so James then came to us from Orlando, coached our first few years in the uh, USL and, and was very successful with us. He then went back to Orlando as the head coach of their MLS team. And then we were fortunate enough to bring him back last year as executive vice president of development over our soccer program, which is now the men's team, the women's team, the academy program, which James will talk about some, um, and you know, the youth program that we have uh, throughout the, the entire city. So soccer has grown a great deal. These two gentlemen are a big part of that. They made it happen. But let's go back to, uh, to Christy, if I can. And it, let me see if Christy can get out here and talk to us a little bit about Racing Louis. Thank you very much, Mike. I really appreciate it. And that was very kind of you. And um, I think Brad Estes might be a little bit busy with some translation in the... Uh, in the next uh, few moments. So first and foremost, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody uh, for taking the time to, to sit down and, and hear what we're trying to do over here with the club and, and on a bigger scale, what we hope that we can do to try and help influence the, the communities and the city that we live in. Um, I'll, give a, I'll give a short little background on myself uh, and then how that, that comes together to hopefully have a, a profound impact with the the great club that is racing Louisville. Um, my hope is that everybody can can hear me okay. And uh, the next piece after hearing me would definitely be understanding me. So I I'll try to speak slowly and you try to you try to think quickly. And so <laughs> so I was very fortunate to um, have been invited to go through an interview process with uh, racing Louisville um, back starting back in February 2020 and and having met James, met James O'Connor via the, the start of the interview process, and then many of the, the gentlemen that you may have uh, met, such as Mike, Brad Estes, uh, and John Neese, um, I was very, very fortunate to, to be offered a position here as the head coach in this magnificent organization. Uh, and the reason I speak so highly about the club is because I, I've been fortunate enough to have various different experiences uh, in pro sports, uh, on the on the women's side of the game, whether that's with the U.S. women's national team, or with uh, with other league or other teams within the NWSL, the National Women's Soccer League, um, and and what hit me was the the world class ambition 
um, that talked about how can we bring the best female athletes in the world to this city. So naturally, you would expect that to come from any ownership or any uh, leader at the top of an organization. So they told me about the fantastic stadium here, which is Lynn Family Stadium. I've heard that one before. They talked to me about the fantastic training facility that they, they wished to um, establish, and we've heard that before. So it, they, they said a lot of the good things, the differences that they actually walk the walk. Um, and that to see, as I sit in this stadium at this very second in time, it is mind blowing. The, the ambition and the, the investment that has been put forth to provide um, this, this fantastic platform and, and level of resources for, for the, uh, the young woman that we bring into this great city. So the next piece beyond that was the ambition matched what I, what I felt that the players deserved, but the actual care and the, the manner in which they wanted to take care of the athletes, the city, the fans, the, the employees was second to none. And it is something that probably we, we, we can be guilty of taking for granted, but I, I learned very quickly across various different experiences, which I'm sure many of you have in your own professional careers that everybody kind of can become um, shut off to what's going on around them. Whereas I've been so taken back by the, the continual care for the athlete within this organization and what that does for the, the individuals that we bring here is it, it's incredible in terms of bringing a value to their, to their individual life. So that, that led to me feeling very good about coming here. I, I moved here in uh, August 2020, uh, right in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, and it was my first time coming to, to Louisville. And I very quickly learned that this is what I was saying it the wrong way. I pronounced it Louisville, which I was very quickly corrected upon. Um, but I got to, to every day rub shoulders with some first class leaders within this, within this organization who are ultimately big influencers on a grand scale within Louisville and, and um, Kentucky and the, and the surrounding states. So once we were here, we decided we needed to build this out the correct way. And, and for me, there was a number of ways we could do this. We could sit down and we could go and attract the absolute best players in the world um, with the resources that we have. And that's a key piece because that's ultimately we're here to win. But there's, a, there's an overriding theme with regards to how we want to influence and how we want to win. Um, so the first thing that we really got tucked into was talking about um, where is it that we wish to go? The vision for this club, and I can tell you real quick, the vision for this club is to be a world-class football club that lifts trophies at the highest level, as well as the spirits of the fans and, and of the communities that we live in. So there are pieces there. We wanted to serve our community. We wanted to grow the fan base, and we ultimately wanted to win trophies. And... Um, and the key piece for that I take great pride in there is that the, the ownership backed the desire to provide for the community, the, the desire to try and influence the communities that we live in. So that's where we wanted to go and how we wanted to get there was our mission statement. And you know, we talk about the highest standards, we talk about our best practices within a line culture where we empower each other, our staff members, our players, the communities, and how do we enrich the communities that we live in? And that became very important. So it's, it, it sounds good to say that we wish to do it, but to be surrounded by a workforce that involves people such as Mike, uh, James O'Connor right here, who I interact with on a daily basis, who actually want to have a profound impact on the community becomes very, very important. And it's something that truthfully, I take a huge amount of pride on, which I'll talk about in one moment. And um, once we established where we wanted to go and how we wanted to get there, it then became a case of, excuse me, who are we going to take on this journey with us? Um, we, we realize that we have a very privileged position and a very powerful platform within the city. Um, and it was vital that we provided the, the next generation and also ultimately generations that came before us, a team that they would be proud of, a team that matched what they stood for, what was important to the city, what was important to the state of uh, Kentucky. So as we went through the filter process of recruiting players, there was a very, very clear set of values 
um, and, and character traits that we thought would be very important for them to come into this club and thrive in this club because we felt that as we set out on this journey, what we do in the, in the early years of this would be the foundation upon what everything is built. And if we did not get that foundation correct with regards to the culture of the organization, with regards to the values, and with regards to how people want to behave and, and, and communicate with each other on a daily basis, it, if we didn't get that right at the start, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't allow us to have the, the profound impact that we're looking for just on and off the field. So now that we have the players here, we, do, we invest a lot of time in them in terms of their own personal growth. Um, I've been very, very fortunate where they, you know, I, I get the impression from the very get go, and I, I share this with the uh, with the young players that are here, that our leadership group, from ownership to management, they enjoy watching people being successful. They enjoy helping people being successful, enjoy pushing people to grow and be challenged. And that's a key concept within within what we're doing. So we do talk about winning titles. We do talk about having players in the city of Louisville um, that will wish to go on and compete in their World Cup for their respective countries, that wish to go on and compete in the Olympic Games for their respective countries. But it does not come without being able to have a positive influence in the communities that we live in. Um, so a side piece to why I feel so strongly about this is, you know, I, I was fortunate to be offered the position, the opportunity to come live in this magnificent place. Um, and it was during a time where there was a lot of civil unrest and there was, it was during a time where the pandemic had us living inside four walls and, and maybe not living our best lives at that very moment in time. And there's many different challenges that we face. <coughs> Excuse me. There's many different challenges we faced on a daily basis. And, you know, I felt that there was a, there was a divisive feel around, not just, not just the city, but across the country. In a in the country I grew up in, there was there was similar challenges and maybe a little bit more extreme as well. But the one thing I learned is that the the sport became an area that could galvanize people and it could galvanize communities and it could pull people together, regardless of backgrounds, regardless of beliefs. And that's something that we feel strongly about. We want to make sure that we provide an atmosphere and an environment and ultimately a vehicle that can pull people together within the city and, and beyond the city from Kentucky and from the surrounding states around us. And we feel strongly that if we get the right people here and we communicate the right message, we can hopefully have a profound impact that helps galvanize the, uh, the communities that we live in. You know, and, and that becomes so important to us. We want to become part of the social fabric of, of Louisville and the, and the local communities around here um, and embed ourselves in, in the values of what we stand for. It's important, you know, we look at the great training facility. That for us is a great recruitment tool, but it's also what can we do for the next generations coming through? And I'm sure James will touch on that in a little bit in terms of, you know, the investment from the ownership. Yes, that helps our teams, but that's open to the public as well. That's for the next generations. They have a place to be contributing to, you know, to be playing, uh, learning the game and, and learning various other different uh, lifelong lessons um, on those fields. We also, as we talk about the final pieces, <clears throat> for me is, again, going back to the people that we hire, we talk about having the best players in the world and we feel strongly that we do have some of them here. But I also feel that we've got world-class people that can be great role models for, for the next generations coming through. Um, and that's something I, I feel a great sense of responsibility in the sense of, um, with regards to the recruitment of those players, but we also want to ensure that those players, those athletes understand that yes, we are influencers and we can have such a, a positive impact upon these, um, upon the areas that we live, upon, we live within. Ultimately, you know, then it gets down to the fun stuff, which is what everybody will get to see on a, a weekly basis. Our season starts um, April 10th. Uh, we, we start the Challenge Cup. The Challenge Cup, we'll have a team right here playing us on Saturday, April 10th um, in Lynn Family Stadium. And then from that point forwards, we will be playing here uh, with an alternating schedule with the men's USL team that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. We'll be playing games from April 10th right through to uh, mid to late October and you know, the hope is that as the world changes a little bit we'll be able to fill out the stadium we'll be able to have that profound 
impact that we look for and maybe bring a theater together where people want to be on a on a saturday or sunday afternoon with a shared uh, a shared aligned goal with the, within the city and that's that's where we think we can help win on and off the field so I, I'll, I'll keep it short and I'll keep it to the point. I, I, I greatly appreciate everybody taking the time to, to sit down and learn a little about this. I, by all means, feel free to ask any questions. Um, I'm sure James has a little, um, a little input and, and a second, his accent's pretty good, but it's not as good. But um, I, I, I really want it to be, to be known that we, we feel a real responsibility here to, to take, take control of what we can influence and people that we can um, hopefully provide a better future for. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm still live. Uh, oh, I am? So I think, I believe um, I've got the mic and James, I can see him, but I'm not sure if I can hear him just yet. I can, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you to, to everybody for uh, giving us the opportunity to, to come and um, and have a quick chat just around some of the things that, that we're doing. Um, there'll be a poll at the end. And as you can see, I have a far more eloquent accent than Christy. So please vote James. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we really appreciate the, the time and the opportunity to just give you a little bit more information around what we're doing and, and basically how the club has evolved. I think when you look at, um, to Mike's point, maybe three to, to five years ago, we had this idea of bringing soccer to Louisville and then obviously trying to, to establish ourselves in market. And I think what we found is that the, the club has gone on to, to become a, um, a focal point really for the community. I think when you look at how we've evolved and how we've developed, not just the fan base, but also some of the community projects that we have started and continue to do, um, I think when you look at the training center as well, I mean, it's phenomenal for us now to have a world-class training facility where we actually have world-class players coming in and participating in market. And, and to Christie's point, April 10th will be our first game and our first glimpse of, of players that have won the World Cup, you know. So when you, when you look at just how far the organization has come, I have to give enormous credit to, to all our ownership group for their um, their commitment, not just the financial commitment, but the uh, the drive to really see things through. Because you know we we broke ground just before July last year um, on a, a multi million dollar uh, training uh, project, and, and we're due to complete probably within the next six weeks, which again is is a phenomenal achievement alone. But it's it's not just a training center for the pro teams. We also obviously have our academy, which ranges from U8 right the way through to U19. So there's there's over 700 kids that participate on a daily basis at the training center, which again, we're now delivering best practice to all of those um, children who are participating in the game. And, and our hope is that we're gonna be able to create some local talent that can go on and, and filter into the pro teams, which is something we're all very, very passionate about creating. Not just that, we also have the adult leagues, which actually are starting in the next three weeks where you have the over 35s right the way through to the over 50s that can participate and play um, on the training fields, which again is, is a unique opportunity for, for the whole community to be able to embrace. Because when we started, you know, five years ago, it was a case there was definitely a shortage of, of facility um, for players and, and no, no matter what the age to be able to utilize. So I think the training center is, is testament really to the community involvement and the participation we've already had from the community around the training center gives us great encouragement. Um, so I think to, to Christie's point, when we look at how, how the club is now evolving, we have the, the men's team, which has obviously been really successful, won some championships on the women's side, brand new team, brand new sort of um, product for the community to be able to come out and enjoy. And I think when you look at maybe perhaps the, the differences that on the, on the NWSL side, you've got players that have, have participated in Olympic Games, participated at World Cups. So we, we, we've been really encouraged by the players who we've been able to attract on the racing side. Again, I think testament to, to Christy and all his work as well. I mean, he's he's very humble, but when you look at what he's achieved as a coach and, and the, um, the different levels that he's participated in, we feel very lucky to have been able to have brought him here because his connections are, are around the world with being... 
a uh, heavily involved in the scouting for the US women's national team, very close relationship with the coach Vladko, which again has led us to be able to to um, to capture some of the really exciting talented players that we have that are going to participate. So again, what I would ask is if you get an opportunity from from April 10th right the way through toward the uh, the end of fall is to come out and watch a game and um, take it in. As you can see, the the wonderful stadium is behind me, Lynn Family Stadium, which is is absolutely incredible. So I I think when you look at um, I think the gentleman who, who touched on earlier about trying to bring people back to downtown, I think we see Lynn Family Stadium as an opportunity where people can come, um, you know, either with your family or if you want to come out with some friends, take in a game, have a great evening. Um, you know, we're very confident um, toward the end of the season we, we'll have a, um, a much higher percentage into the stadiums. And I think at that point, hopefully, um, it, the COVID situation will have slightly eased and I think we'll all be in a, in a much better place. But if you haven't been to the stadium yet, it's a, it's a world-class environment. It's already, um, it's involved, um, I think, for the top 10 stadiums throughout the world. It's um, already been classed in a competition for that. So as you can see behind me, and, and that doesn't really do it justice. So I, I think if if you do get the opportunity, come out and take a game in, because I'm sure you will be really impressed with the, the level of the quality on the field, but also the family atmosphere that we have here. I think there's there's many friends of mine that have taken in a game and I'm really surprised by the family atmosphere. And it's a, it's a great evening out for all the family. I'm happy to take any questions if there's if yeah. there's more questions or and likewise anybody that would um that has any questions or needs any uh translations please the, by all means chrissy i don't know if you can pass the mic to me or not can you hear me yes you i can hear you perfectly fine. oh okay okay good well let me let me just make a comment uh to the rest of the members of the rotary club that have been watching these presentations uh i think you can see about what these two men have said what a class act, uh, both of them, along with Hackworth and our, our entire uh, business side. I mean, the, and then we've got a coaching staff that goes deep, not just at the top, but goes deep. All of them have just done a magnificent job. Our, what we now call our back office, which is led by Brad Estes on the business side of soccer, has done a magnificent job. The building of the stadium and how all of that came together, the building of this practice facility, and there will be more to come on that as we go on. But I think you get a flavor for what this is all about. And, and what I'm so proud of is, is back to what Christy said and James said, I think what we've been doing is accomplishing what we originally set out to do. And that was to bring something to Louisville that our youth could be uh, attracted to and retained by. So we, we, want a, we want a program that the people, the young people, especially of our city, don't feel like they have to go somewhere else to get their, their uh, taste of professional sports. And now we've got both men and women and youth, and it's, uh, I, I couldn't be more prouder of, of how this thing has evolved. And, and these two gentlemen certainly are a big part of that, along with the rest of our, our group. So thank, thank you, uh, Christy and James, for base, what you do, and, and Brad and all the rest, Hack, all the rest of the team. So thank you. Really good. And Rotarians, please um, go to the chat function or just raise your hand and I'll try to see if I can see you on the screen. We'd love to have some conversation. And I just wanted to ask, um, I'm an old soccer mom myself. And, um, you know, at the time there weren't that many um, children that were playing soccer. Of course, that's changed. And I just wonder as they get older and as Mike was just sharing, you know, there's such an enthusiasm by young adults. Do you see the passion for soccer um, just really growing, um, not only in Louisville, but nationally. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we've, we've been very fortunate um, to, to be able to put out such a fantastic stadium and, and, and training facility here. Um, but what it does, I think, ultimately, the bigger piece is that it, it brings these um, superstars right here to the great city. And all of a sudden, it becomes something that's real. And we're not just looking at the TV. We've got someone that a young player can look up and say, oh my goodness, I can be that person one day. I can, that person lives in my city. That person shops in my stores. That person takes the same walks I do along the river. So I think, yes, there, soccer's growth within 
not only in America but also um, within within the city of Louisville has been has been very rapid, and it's it's only going to continue to do so because I think one of the great things, particularly on the the uh, the woman's side, is there's still many pioneers that are laying the path for those that come behind us and, and with that becomes a, a real powerful understanding of the the influence that they can have upon the next generation so I, I really do think there's going to be a continued growth of the game um it's you know it's number one sport in the world for a reason it's played everywhere we go and um, everybody calls it a different name but i think that's that's something that's so powerful for the city and you know i, I saw a question there uh, from todd uh, with regards to amina Aggage. You know, she went to school here. She did high school here. She played youth soccer here. She went to college here, and now she's playing right here. And hopefully, we'll be walking out in front of the family stadium. It's it's very understated, but I think if you know a young eight year old girl can say, "Hey, I mean, I did it. Why can't I?" And now the pathway is there, and the resources are even are even stronger and more powerful, and the pathway is a little bit more defined. I think it 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 has such a profound impact, you know, and at times. Um, I've, I've been fortunate to be around it uh, to see the the energy it provides to the next the next generation, and I, I can't speak highly about highly enough about how powerful that can be as we as we try to be positive influencers. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, Bruce, are you on the line where you can unmute and ask your question? Yes, um, I I just was wondering uh, when you're going to announce your regular season schedule and. Do you think you'll be able to fill the stadium? Um, so, James, by the way, I don't want to take up all the mic because people might like me more than you at that point. Um, <laughs> so if, um, when we'll release the regular season, the, the league is working through the regular season schedule as we speak. Um, and the reason there will be a slight delay is that some teams within this league do not own their own stadium. And therefore, you know, there's, there's various different alternate schedules that they have to work with within their own market. For us, we're ready, we're set, and we're good to go. Um, it's out of our hands at this point. And then with regards to how many we're allowed in the stadium, I would say on a regular year, a normal year, which seems, you know, it seems a world away at this point, but hopefully it's getting closer. The hope is that, yeah, absolutely. The enthusiasm that we've seen for the men's soccer team here, we're hoping that we can replicate that and, and really tie ourselves into the community. I think just following on from that, Christy, I mean, I think we've been in heavily involved with negotiations with the, the state and the city, and we, we feel very confident we're going to be able to get a, uh, a number of people into the stadium. And, and I think that's something we've been very encouraged by. And, and just I'm, I'm looking at some of the questions here as well, just some of the different countries that some of the players have come from. We've got Yuki Nagasato, who's come from Japan. He was actually won the World Cup and won the UEFA Champions League on the, on the women's side. We've got Freya Olofsson from Sweden, who's coming. Um, we, we haven't actually announced some players, but we have another couple of players that are coming internationally within the next three to four weeks that we feel are really exciting, talented uh, female players that are really going to help us. So um, I think we've sort of searched long and far to, to really bring elite level talent to, to create a great team. We feel confident that we're going to surprise uh, a lot of people um, this year um, and I think that's something that, that we feel passionate about is, is making sure that we have a team that really sort of represents the city with, with great pride and and you know shows everybody just how good not just the team but how good our city is and that's something that we feel that we feel very strongly about that. Um, I see another question here just about the actual training facility so we have four turf fields and three grass fields and a 31,000 square foot building. So all of the turf fields have been utilized um, by the community and um, by our own academy. And I think that's something we feel very strongly about to, to Christie's point. We have Amina Ekic who, who went to school locally, who went then to U of L and we actually um, took um, at number five in the collegiate draft. So she will play um, as a hometown player, which is something we feel is really important, not just for the city, but also for our academy, to Christie's point. We have a number of young um, young players uh, in the academy that will be looking at Amina, looking at her journey and trying desperately to, to go on and emulate what she has done. There's, I would say there's probably three to five players in our um, academy on the um, girls' side who we really feel have a great opportunity of 
of coming on and the potential to, to get into the first team is, is definitely there for them. So the training ground provides a wonderful opportunity for the players to get better and to really work hard to, mm. to achieve that goal. Absolutely. And I see a question there um, from Todd with regards to the International Women's Cup coming in August. I mean, that is tremendously exciting um, for us as a, as a new club to, to bring world-class talent, not just in our team and not just every weekend when we have opposing teams coming in here from within the NWSL, but to immediately reach out and bring in two teams from, uh, from Europe who are two of the best club teams in the world who will have numerous of the, the most talented players in the world coming right here to, to the city who will bring their fan base here He'll bring all their resources here to compete over um, over a number of games. is is fantastically exciting. We will share that with um, with uh, the Chicago Red Stars, and those teams will be will be playing right here in uh, Lynn Family Stadium, and they will be training at our facility, and they'll be staying in our hotels, and and they'll be living the life here right here in Louisville. And I think the bigger thing for me is the fact that no sooner was the stadium up, and no sooner was this, was our team established than the leadership and ownership of the organization said, okay, now what's the next step? What can we continue to bring more and more to the city? And I think, I mean, I, again, I can't, I can't talk about them high enough or, or speak highly enough of them is that ambition, but also the conviction to, to follow through and, and commit the time and energy and, and ultimately finances to, to make this something very special is um, it's, it's remarkable. I think it's another point as well that, you know, ownership have, have done a wonderful job in, in creating the economic impact for the city. I think when you look to Christie's point, I mean, we, we can't mention the names, but they're, they're two um, world-class club teams that are going to come and participate in August. They'll bring a lot of supporters with them, um, certainly on the racing side. I think the last count we had um, season tickets from, um, I think it was 14 different states, so there's a number of supporters out of state that are going to come in market to these games that you know local restaurants and hotels should benefit from. We've tournaments um, going this weekend and next weekend again where we have out of state um, families coming into market. So I think what what we're trying to really drive again is the is the economic impact in the community field to really show everyone just how good Louisville is and and how great the people are here. Oh, I just saw a question there from Todd. How exciting is that? Recently? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually tremendous to have Emily Fox as part of the, the U.S. Women's National Team. Um, obviously, for those that may or may not know, the U.S. Women's National Team is, is arguably one of the most successful professional sports team uh, in the world um, across, any, across the genders and um, across any sport. So for us to have a player that represents this, this club, and represents the city out training and being part of the U.S. Women's National Team is tremendously, tremendously exciting. She's a fantastic young lady um, and a great uh, advocate for um, the growth within this club and also for providing further opportunities for young females. So that's exciting. And we, we truly feel, you know, we talk internally about having 10 players going to the 2023 World Cup which could present those problems on the short term during the World Cup as we'll be missing many big names. But that's the level of ambition. That's the level of uh, athlete that we have come in to, to come and represent us. We, we looked at our um, average age. And as of right now, the average age of our team is 23.2 years old, which is incredibly young. But it, it also speaks to the, uh, the amount of influence we would, would like to have upon them. Um, and that's definitely been provided throughout management um, by, you know, continuing to try and cultivate a, a culture that empowers, but also challenges every individual uh, on their own journey. Any other questions or comments? If you all want to unmute yourself and just ask. It's just really an honor to have you all with us today. Thank you for your time. It's our privilege. Any, any other Rotarians? Well, I see Craig giving a big clap. So <laughs> I, hopefully you can hear the feeling. And we can't wait to be in the stadium uh, cheering you on in uh, person. And that day's coming soon. We know it is. And the Rotary Club of Louisville will be um, planning an outing to be with you as, as well. But uh, Christy and James, uh, we just wish you all great success. And most importantly, we appreciate your, your service and your commitment to excellence 
that you're bringing to our community. Um, that's just a very understated way of just, just truly thank you. And, and Mike, I think Christy said it best when he said it's just mind blowing, really, the, um, that you all dream big and you made it happen and it wasn't just talk. So um, I love what he said, that the level of resources is just fantastic. But more than that, you know, you're giving our youth something to aspire to and really and truly lifting up um, our human spirit, connecting us as a community. And we just thank you and, and your team for your continued dedication and leadership. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for taking the time. We greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, it's we're, we're very proud of what we're trying to do and, and we we take great privilege in, in being able to, to talk to such fantastic people. And uh, I look forward to seeing Greg wearing the hat in Lynn Family Stadium. <laughs> Greg, we need to get some more of those, pass them around. So mm -hmm. um, thank you. thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So I also want to thank Rick um, for an excellent presentation, providing a, a glance at some of the impact that our club is having on international service and specifically the clean water and sanitation as we celebrate Rotary International's focus this month on clean water. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Rotarian Denise Sears as she was named a member of the newly established City of Louisville um, Police Review Board. So congratulations, Denise. We're really proud of, of that and, and know that you will do great work. And uh, thanks, Craig. We understand that you we've got a calendar date that's coming for a social soiree that will be forthcoming uh, for Rotary. And uh, as um, it was mentioned, there are many other uh, social events that will be coming very soon and you'll be hearing more about those dates. But we are really looking forward to having the opportunity to gather in person and um, to, to connect with one another. And one of those, as I mentioned, will be being at River City Football Club together. Next week, we'll continue our focus on the Rotary Club of Louisville service related to clean water. And our pre-meeting will be hosted by Rotarians that are part of the Lifeline Committee, Larry Sloan, Jerry Martin, and Ginger Wallace, as they share a new project, the Rotary Club of Louisville, Connecting for Good for the West End. Our featured speaker will be Jean Dunlap, Community Investment Specialist with Louisville Coordinated Community Investment, and her presentation title, Equitable Community Investment, Reversing White Gaze, Navigating the Dominant Culture in America. Now remember donations for the scholars, get those to Walt and uh, the also will be packing those items together to give the goodie bags to the students and register for the March 16th virtual business networking event with our own Rotarian. And um, right immediately following this meeting is what is Rotary to so stay on the call if you have any interest. Thank you everyone for being here. I know, know about you, but I am totally inspired and excited about what's to come and appreciate hearing more about this wonderful River City Football Club that's right here in our community. And thank you all so very much. We are adjourned. Be well. Thank you.